Hi guys and girls on YouTube, welcome to my channel. Now in this video uh, we're going to be looking at the Thorn or Ferguson Thorn TX10 chassis. Um, now this is actually um, a bit later than the last video I did on the TX10. Um, it's a bit of a later model. Um, this is actually the 22 inch one with teletext and stereo sound. Um, now if you look on there you can see the, the stereo sound um, the indicators you've got bass treble and uh, balance and they all light up very very pretty colored LEDs light up but unfortunately um, I'm not going to be able to put it in stereo sound and demonstrate that um, because I don't have the remote control for it right so that's the back view of the TV um, on this side you can see the cabinets a little bit bigger and um, because it accommodates two speakers and the um, the stereo wide sound and um, audio was behind that panel there um, now this comes from an age um, and TVs where you had two or four screws to hold the back on um, unlike modern TVs where you have about 20 30 so all you do is you undo two of them and the back comes straight off right well I've gone through my um, collection of old Ferguson feedbacks and I've actually looked this set up um, so now we have an approximate year of manufacture um, try and do this while holding the camera at the same time um, so there it is Ferguson feedback um, the best sound all around and um, that's it with a matching stand there and the matching looks like it might be a 3v no I don't know 3v 29 video I'm not just sure now um, but I don't have the stand with us anyway um, so it's this is dated October 1982 um, and if we turn over here also, um, October 82, November, was the start of the Channel 4 broadcasts. Um, so that's it, it tells you all about it. Um, let's get the back off the TV and actually have a look inside and then we'll power it up. Right, so that's a picture of the inside of the TV. Uh, we'll just take a quick look round, then we'll put it in the service position. <coughs> I'll tell you a couple of common faults we used to have on these in the 1980s and then we'll switch it on and see what the picture's like. Um, so it is actually in very good clean condition. Um, I've actually repaired the fault on this already, which we'll come to in a minute. Um, if you move over there, you undo that screw and all this comes down. That's the stereo processing behind there. Um, that's a picture of the tube base there with the... Um the focus flash over spark gap in there um, it's fitted with the mullard a56 540x now at some time this is at it's had this tube replaced that is not the original um, now how do I know it's the original um, simple because there's a sticker there that says Philips uh, which indicates this tube has come from a 22 inch Philips TV probably a K30 um, and somebody's wrote the date on 9th of the 10th 2000 so presumably um, that was when this tube was swapped over um, now on this side here we've got the uh, remote control and we've got the preset brightness colour contrast which I've had to adjust because um, I don't have the remote um, the back panel carries the um, signal the signal stage of sound output so what you do is you unclip that there unclip that there and then that folds down for servicing um, now I can see another repair there that resistor is not original it should have had one of these blue fusible resistors when when there's an overload the resistor cracks in half and breaks the circuit um, so over here we've got the luminance delay line chrominance delay line um, that's the color processing move over a bit there that's the sound output I see and uh, that's the um, I think that's the IF amplifier that is the swarf panel for the signals and um, over here the tuner if we move to here you can see that aerial socket's got the brown wire and then it goes to a black wire at some time somebody's replaced this tuner um, or they replaced this wire but that was a fault on this it was low gain um, so I've taken the tuner out, I've done the dry joints in it and it works absolutely fine now. Um, this board standing up here is a teletext. Um, 
as you can see that's the frame output chip now there's been a later one um, it actually has a TDA frame output chip I think the earlier TX10s had a couple of discrete transistors um, moving over here that there is the line output transformer um, I've explained that in a previous video and if we move over here that is the chopper transformer that also generates the focus supply and the EHT for the tube um, now a few little common faults on these on the day if we pull that off there the tube base panel um, there's a little green LED there which we'll see lit when it comes on um, from memory I think that sets the bias for the emitter reference for the video output um, transistors to about 2.2 volt if that LED goes out um, then you have sound but no picture um, so as you can see it's in very presentable clean condition um, it's obviously been used um, let's just have a quick scan over there and then I'll put the tube base back on oh I'll just show you the service position uh, for this set and um, another common fault I've just remembered if you get tripping on one of these with very low EHT um, this little board here if you unplug that and flip it over it's quite often there's a dry joint on this plug and socket behind here um, for the line scan coils and that can cause low EHT and tripping um, that was very common in its day in fact what some people used to do is just cut them off and hardwire them straight onto the terminals there so let's just put the tube base back on I'll show you the service position then we'll run it up with the skybox right as you can see now the chassis is tilted up into its service position um, which gives you access to the back of the board let's have a look underneath um, underneath here uh, I'm seeing it's had some work done um, at some time it's had a new frame output IC uh, that's where somebody's damaged the print and bridged it over um, there's also quite a few dry joints been soldered in the east-west modulator um, now a very common fault uh, some more dry joints been soldered there um, a very common fault in its day was the combined chopper and EHT transformer used to get dry joints on here um, that was very very common in fact you can see they've all been done but underneath this plastic frame there is two more connections uh, that need to be resoldered uh, now quite often service engineers used to just melt this piece out with a soldering iron um, so they could do the dry joints but um, the proper thing to do would be take all this out of its um, plastic casing and then that gives you access to the two joints under there and do the job properly um, so as you can see under here um, apart from where it's had the print bridged a little bit here and there it is in actually um, quite good condition so yeah there you go that's the uh, the 1980s Thorne Ferguson TX10 chassis um, let's just stop the camera then and we'll connect it to a skybox and power it up right okay so it's connected to um, this skybox here it's an Amstrad DRX 300 um, which if you watch my earlier videos I've converted it into um, a colour bar generator as well so uh, it's already connected up tuned in uh, let's switch it oh one other thing um, still got some parts in stock for these um, so uh, let's just switch it on let's come on channel one um, now there's a few controls behind here not many uh, we can do the volume the channels and brightness that's it I can't alter I can't alter the color or um, anything else without the remote and um, I can't show you all these lit up without the remote control either um, but there you go um, black bands coming from the camera again um, as you can see the focus seems pretty sharp um, the colors quite vivid um, there's still plenty of life left in the CRT Um, I'll just show you the, I can do this with one hand, no I have to swap the camera over, 
put my hand behind the back of the Amstrad box there we can convert it to colour bars as well so you've got snooker sound I think right about now, thank Colour you. Bars. Well, we are seconds away from having to come off air, so we really do encourage you to jump on iPlayer right now to watch this. It could be history in the making. And if you do do that, just watch how twitchy this gets as he closes in on the magical 147. As a So yeah, there we go guys. Okay, so we got interrupted by a customer coming in. Um, that's one of the slight disadvantages of having a shop when you're trying to make a YouTube video. But uh, yeah, there you go guys. Um, that's a 1980s Thorne Ferguson TX10 uh, with stereo sound, which I can't demonstrate because I haven't got the remote. So uh, thanks for looking and... Um, Please subscribe to my channel, I've got some more interesting videos, um, hopefully coming very shortly in the next few days. Alright guys, thanks for watching and subscribe for more.